Hello and welcome back to my series of videos on UPSs and NAS. I'm going through each of the top tier NAS brands out there for home and business users and I want to show you guys what happens when your NAS is connected to a UPS and that UPS loses connection to mains power. Pretty much the main reason anyone would buy a UPS is because their NAS or their all their electrical devices or any of the stuff in their hardware environment, PCs, Macs, phones, lighting, whatever, needs to run off of this battery system. This has been supplied by CyberPower, lovely fellas. They've sent this NAS for, um, this UPS for us to use in this series of videos, and I'll probably hopefully keep it around for a few dedicated UPS videos as well. I've got about a week to do all this, so hopefully, fingers crossed, get that squeezed in. Uh, but on top of that, I want to show what happens when a network attached storage device, in today's video, we're looking at Acer Store, um, happens when the mains power is lost, what does the NAS do? What are the options open to you? What are the systems of alerts? And ultimately, is it a worthy purchase for that particular NAS brand in your hardware environment? Because a number of you, when you buy a NAS for business, automatically buy UPS. Now, this UPS here from CyberPower is a 1500 class. So that supports way, way more devices than this should. In fact, on the rear, and it is a nightmare to rotate, you'll probably see that the device has got whole host of mains plugs i will be doing a dedicated overview of this product again got got to pay them back somewhere haven't you um do like an overview to show you guys what exactly they're putting out there um but as you can see we've got eight ports there on the rear for eight separate devices into this with this one at the bottom being the mains connection so this can support up to eight physical devices and you've got the lan and network connection and stuff like that but we'll save that for their video um what I'm going to do now is make my way over to the other side of the room where the real physical NAS is, because that's just the box this arrives in. I'm going to set up a tripod to show the disconnection of mains power and hopefully give you guys some idea about what happens on an Acer store when there's a power failure via a UPS. Let's look. Right, so we've made our way to the desktop of the Nimbus Store 4, this Acer store NAS. Um, what I've done is already connect the UPS and plug the UPS in. So hopefully on screen, I'll look at the other side of the room. Uh, it should all be set up for you. You can see the Nimbus store at the top of the screen there. And on the floor is that enormously heavy um, Cyber Power 1500 class UPS. Now, you may notice a couple of things. First and foremost, you can see a purple cable there. That's a USB cable that runs between the UPS and the Acer store NAS device. What that does is present a kind of heartbeat situation and this allows the UPS to know on behalf of the UPS when there's a mains power problem. So in real terms what that means is if there was a problem between that UPS and that mains power connector that you can see the connection to the wall <coughs> then the UPS will tell the NAS that there is a problem via that UPS connection. You can also see that the mains power is being fed directly from the Acer store into that UPS. So the Acer store has no mains power connection to the wall. It's directly into the UPS, and the UPS with its batteries are plugged straight into the wall. So, first things we want to do is we can look at the external devices. And here, immediately, we can see that UPS device is already listed. Before we go any further, it's worth highlighting that today for this video, we're only looking at the desktop user interface here. We're only looking at the effects um, to you, the end user, via the web browser here. If you set the device up via the access control panel uh, and set up an uh, individual admin user, and from that admin user, then make your way into Easy, or is it Easy Access Manager, basically the means to synchronize this device via the internet, then you're able to get notifications sent to both your mobile phone, your tablet, and more. Loads of ways in which you can be notified. So, for now, let's make our way into this UPS connected over USB. And we can see there's lots of real-time information about the device. Uh, network UPS support, and effectively what we're going to see in the event of a power failure. If we have a look there, we can see the power of the whole device. We can go into the preferences, and then we can say what we want the device to do in the event of a power outage. In other words, when mains power is severed to the UPS and therefore it affects every device the UPS is connected to. So we can go into safe mode or a shutdown. Safe mode is kind of like a hibernation mode and it will cease all read write operations onto the device. Um, it will do it safely and just to make sure that any data being read and written is finished and there isn't any loss. Uh, shutdown 
has the potential to sever uh, read and write actions that are happening, but has the added benefit that the whole system will shut down properly, all the way down to a cold state. So shut down, if you're doing read and write operations, will cease, and safe mode will safely pair them off. So for now, we're going to go with a safe mode shutdown to put the device in, and then we can say how long do we want it to last. This means that if we're constantly interacting with the device, we can decide how long we want it to be before the device goes into safe mode. So if you're using network access like this, or if you're using internet level access on client applications for mobile or desktop systems, you'll still get the notification that there's a power problem, but the system won't enter safe mode for this length of time unless you want it to. Just make sure that your UPS has got enough coverage to withstand that draw of power from the Asus Store NAS during that period. We're using a 1500 class CyberPower UPS, so there's a lot of power to play with there. But for now, we're going to go for one minute. So one minute after the notification, the system should, should start shutting down. Now we can enable network UPS support. What that means is other devices on the network can then be fed the, the kind of push. But for now, we're not going to do that. So, and remember, the CyberPower UPS has its own software as well and its own network access that can be configured independently of the NAS. I just recommend that you utilize the NAS server itself. You can see that there's 7 hours and 23 minutes worth of power um, in this UPS based on what we're currently doing. That figure will change depending on what you do. But for now, what I'm going to do is go into the File Explorer and have a bit of a play. There's still lots of information from our previous videos where we've utilized this device. And what we're going to do now is we're going to simulate a power failure, a mains power failure to the UPS. So for now, before I go over there, I'm going to make my way into a nice big folder of data. There's some, oh, they're, they're really tiny folders actually. Let's have a look. Let's find ourselves some big files to play with. Here we go. We've got some pretty large files there. And we're going to copy these to a new location. We're going to pop those in the Steam folder just for the hell of it. So while that's happening, I'm now going to simulate a power failure on the UPS. You should see me on camera. Okay, so here we are, making my way to the other side. Three, two, one. And we've removed the power. Now, you've probably heard the fans of the UPS kicking in there in the background. Though um, that operation happening there is the UPS now beginning the communication between these devices. At the moment, we're still committing this, and we've got our task monitor at the top that will show us stuff happening in the background. Now, the triggering of the UPS on the host system is not immediate. There has to be communication, and right now, the UPS should be communicating information there we go with the beep, to the Acer Store NAS platform. So for now, we're still going to count up to a minute, and we're going to see this UPS communicating with the Acer Store in the background. We probably won't see a great deal of that, but this should in turn allow us to see exactly what happens in the event of a UPS failure with an Acer Store NAS. In the background there, we've still got that one letting us know those read-write operations are happening there. We've still got the UPS beeping like crazy there in the background. Our read-write operation is still commencing despite the fact that we've now severed mains power. And we can see that the system is now in safe mode. So it's letting us know that the UPS has stopped receiving power and the NAS itself is now initiating safe mode. It's letting us know that once power returns, the NAS will give us access once again. So for now, if we duplicate this tab, we can still access the desktop. Oh, get the right password. But the system is still powering down and will not give us access because it's in safe mode, which utilizes a tremendously low amount of power. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to reinitialize mains power with our UPS, and then we're going to show the shutdown mode. So sit tight. While that beep stops getting annoying, and I'm going to reinitialize power. Two seconds. Connecting. 
power in. Three, two, one. I'm sure you heard the fans of the UPS then cease there to keeping things cool there in the background. And uh, no doubt, while I'm talking to you right now, the UPS is going to beep in a moment and it's still sending messages to the Acer Store NAS to let it know that the power is back to normal. It's probably going to recharge its batteries as well. And then the Acer Store NAS will resume exactly where we left off. The more keen of you may have noticed that the lights on the Nimbus Store NAS did not power down. Um, they kept going there, and just to let you know, the device is still in safe mode without access. Um, right now, I can hear the drives spinning up there. I don't know if you heard that, because they are quite enterprise-class drives inside. But for now, we can click Enter, go back in, and see the content of our Acer Store NAS. Let that finish up there. It's taking a fraction longer than I anticipated. Do, 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 do. Let's have a look here. And it's reinitializing access. We'll log in. Close the other tab. And as you can see, boom. Everything's back exactly where it was. And if we go to the activity monitor, Let's see if there's a notification for anything that's happened there in the background. And go to the processes. There's all those processes there. And for the most part, everything is back to exactly the way it was before. Now, what I'm going to be doing is making my way back into this device. And from here, I'm then going to change the settings for that powering down with our UPS. So now we want the device to fully shut down. We can shut down the NAS immediately, or we can shut down the NAS when the UPS is low on power. Now this is going to be a bit of a gamble. Um, obviously not for me, because I'm not going to do it in this video, but if you do use this option here, then you are kind of running on an unknown time frame. And it will shut down the NAS when the battery of the UPS reaches a certain low quality, but the more devices you've got, the more draw there's going to be on that UPS. And if you're connecting to all eight of the ports on this CyberPal NAS, there's a good chance that that low percentage will go very, very fast. So do bear that in mind. For the case of this video, I'm gonna go down with shutting down the NAS immediately. I'm not even gonna use the time limit. I just want the device to shut down the minute it is triggered an issue. And this is something we will hopefully see on screen. Bear in mind, this isn't just going to shut down in one go it will obviously want to shut down safely so now we're going to apply our settings that we want the NAS to shut down safely in the event of a UPS failure we're going to wait for our new settings to be uh, refreshed here on screen and there they are and now I'm going to walk over and disconnect again two seconds Once again, we have our beeps. Once again, we have our fans kicking in. And right now, we're looking at the screen at the Acer Store immediately starting to shut itself down. I can see from here the LEDs on the Acer Store are flashing, but we are getting a triggered shutdown operation, which is exactly what we wanted from this device. Now, it's worth highlighting that in a full shutdown situation, once power is reinitialized to the UPS, the Acer Store will not boot again automatically. That is the difference between standby and a complete shutdown. So you should have to choose and make sure you know what you're doing when selecting these options. Because some of these options, if you live in an area, I know there's certain areas of the world where you can get a regular power supply and therefore the UPS kind of exists to work as a kind of buffer between those intermittent uh, downtimes. For you people, I think standby is incredibly beneficial. But for the rest of the market, I do think a straight shutdown is definitely the thing to do. Because it's the best way to protect the integrity of the data on your disks and to, you know, avoid untold hardware damage. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Once again, I'm going to stop thanking them. But thanks, CyberPower, for sending us this UPS. I'll be honest, it was a hell of a big thing to get sent to us. And it was a nightmare to get here in the studio. But 
I can't argue with you, it's a good bit of kit. And of course, Acer Store, if you are interested in buying yourself an Acer Store NAS, do check out the links in the description to both span.com, NAS Compares, and more. But otherwise, click like if you've enjoyed this, click subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.